They say the game is won between the trenches. You are now tuned in to BFTV. It's the D line. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Rico back at it again. We have now transitioned. We've done the offense. We are now moved in to the defense. This is where championships are won. You got a strong defense. You certainly have an opportunity to go to the playoffs. You have an elite defense. That could bring you to the championship. And this is where we begin with the D-line, the henchmen, the boys that get after that quarterback. And what better person to start with then our guy, our general, Kyle Williams. Here's the deal. There's a lot of great things I can say about Kyle Williams, and it will never stop. He's the general. He's the leader. He's got motor. He's got it all. At 6'1 frame, you know what I mean, three and change, wasn't touted as one of the biggest dudes and one of the best dudes, but he worked hard, work ethic, just a dog in the trenches, and that's what's made him what he is today. There's no question as to what's going down with Kyle Williams. The man does it all. Pass rush, stop the run, lead the men, and you can count on him. So when it comes to a guy like Kyle Williams, there's nothing bad that I can say. The only thing is father time. Father time is nipping at his heels. But you know what? He could probably play with a bit of heart another year or two. I say a year, but we'll find out. My man Kyle Williams, part of the problem, or part of the process you be the judge y'all let me know in the comment section Shaq Lawson here's the deal with Shaq Lawson man I am perplexed with Shaq Lawson I was a little skeptical when we brought him in you know what I'm saying high draft pick I was like okay from Clemson you know what I mean we don't have a great uh track record with drafting players from Clemson because they just they don't pan out for us so when Shaq Lawson came in I was like, okay, well, let's see what he does. He mean, he, he started off, we broke the news that he had a bad shoulder, he's going in for surgery. We didn't really get much of him. Now, here's the deal with him. I don't know about Shaq Lawson, man. I really don't. Part of me, I was, a, I, I think he needs to be more of a presence on defense. Now, it's not all negative. The man is an anchor. He's a big boy. You can't move him. You can't just simply just move him out of the way. He's going to anchor himself down, and he's going to force you to have to bounce it outside or go inside. So that's one thing that I will say that I do like about Shaq Lawson. Solid run defender. We had two anchors at Jerry Hughes, my man Shaq Lawson. And Shaq Lawson, as, as little that he was on the field, he did a very good job. He graded very well against the run. I do have my reservations, though. He's slow. He's not, he doesn't have jump. He doesn't have burst. Like, I need that out of my DN. I need you to burst off that line if you're going to be a pass rush. We brought you into Buffalo to rush the passer. And that's something I didn't feel that I got from you. Slow off the line, no quick get up. Uh, and you know what I mean? In my defensive line that I, that I drafted early, I need an impact. I need you to be an impact. And he just wasn't enough of an impact for us. And I think that's where we suffered on the D-line. Yes, he did have four sacks. He did. But out of those four sacks, two of them that I remember fell right into his lap. It wasn't that he made the effort. He anchored his line and stayed put. Quarterback fell right into his lap. I want a guy that gets after it, digs in, rips, swims, does everything he can to get to that quarterback and create havoc. When you get a sack that falls in your lap, kind of like, kind of like Jason Strahan. Jerry Hughes, my man, Jerry Hughes. Listen, let's keep it real. He's probably our best D lineman. He's our best D lineman. He got paid handsomely, $22 million guaranteed. He is a pass rush general. I mean, two years straight, he had 10 sacks and 9.5 sacks, right? So you know he can get after the quarterback. The last couple years, he's kind of slowed down a little bit. Some can blame it on scheme. Some blame it on motivation. What I can say is that we didn't get enough out of Jerry Hughes. Now, burst off the line, excellent. Spin move, excellent. Array of moves to get to the quarterback, fantastic. Great run defender. Actually, a very underrated run defender. He's excellent. And that's something that will help us going forward. However, your specialty is to rush the passer. In the last couple years, you've lacked it. Last year, you only had four sacks. That's something that 
we need more out of you. Now, you do other great things well. Pass rushing is exactly what we need from you. You need to step up in that game. Now, the one thing that I really, really want him to work on, eliminate the bonehead plays. Yo, I'm sick and tired of us getting a defensive stop on third down, and then we see laundry on the field. Damn, who was it? Everybody knows. Ah, oh, shit. There it is, Jerry Hughes. Jerry Hughes with the mess up. Yo, we sick and tired of that, man. Control your emotions because a lot of third down plays would have been off the field and gave us an advantage. But because of your bonehead plays, we just gave them a new set of downs. Jerry Hughes, we need a big year coming out of you this year, man. We really do. Cap Cappy, my man, my Haitian Zo Sakpasse. Versatile defender. He can play the D-end. He can play stand-up linebacker. That's what I do like about him. Uh, the one thing that I just don't like is that he gets washed up. You know what I mean, you get you get a lineman that gets right up in his chest, he's done. He's done for. Now, he's got a lot of moves. He does have a lot of moves. But if you get washed up, you can do nothing about that. Look for Cap Cappy to make a little bit of a push uh, to get onto this roster. I mean, I know he hates being bounced around, went to... He's been on the, the Cardinals for a little bit, bounced around the league a little bit, so he's found himself a spot. So if he can make enough of a push in offseason, you can find him on this team again. Ryan Davis, I believe, in my opinion, is the second best pass rusher on this team. Uh, he came the last I knew of him. He, he played uh, he played for Dallas um, and did really well in Dallas. Um, here's the deal. He didn't, he didn't get on the field enough. He had three sacks this year. I mean, he's probably the second leading sacker because our, our first leading sacker had four. So him with three, uh, you know he was getting after it. So if we get him on the field more, it work. He he has great leverage. He's got long arms so he can get in and out. He can jack up linemen. Um, so I look to see Ryan Davis make more of an impact on the defense this year. Shout out to Draft Diamonds. If it wasn't for Draft Diamonds, my man Damon uh, out there, uh, we probably wouldn't even know who Ryan Davis is. Because of Draft Diamonds, and he gets these guys that are not known that come from small schools and he pushes them up these guys make a difference so if you guys don't know who draft diamonds is check him out on twitter my man is doing he's doing work and he's helping a lot of these guys out especially guys like ryan davis cedric thornton you know what cedric thornton came on cedric thornton came on interior lineman can play the dn pass rusher thing is we the, the theme of this year is we brought a lot of pass rushers in but they didn't really get your job done a guy like cedric thornton uh, I would love to have him back and, and make a big difference. The guy's got a non-stop motor. He just keeps going and doesn't stop. And that's the type of interior lineman you need. Spin moves, pushing, bull rush, you name it. He can bring it to you. But he just didn't get enough playing time. You got Lawson, Kyle Williams. You had Adolphus Washington and Jerry Hughes. So there's a rotation. Uh, but he just didn't get enough into the rotation. Hopefully, he makes a little bit of noise this offseason and, and can uh, and make this roster. Adolphus Washington. Here's a tricky one, man. Brought him in the third round. You know what I'm saying? Was supposed to do big things. And I expected big things. Uh, came in pretty strong for a rookie. But then got benched in the last game of his rookie season. I didn't understand that. The year after, uh, had an up and down season. Here's the deal. He has all the ability to be a staple starting DT in this game. Great burst off the line great hands he's got a whole bunch of moves if you just go back and watch the film when he's back at ohio state dude is a monster we just need him to translate that game this year and i hope this year is the year that we don't need to really uh dive deep into the dt because the dolphins washington comes on if we can bring one guy in and have those guys really anchor the middle of the line i think we have big things coming he fell off he fell off a little bit. He tailed off in the end of the season a little bit. So we can't have that. We need you to stay consistent all year round. And you only providing one sack? That's a little alarming to me. We brought you in to get to the passer. That's why we brought you in. So you need to get your act together and get after that quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, you keep it up. You might find yourself a free agent in a couple years. So we need Adolphus Washington to step up and show us exactly who he is and what he was at Ohio State and translate that to the Bills D-line. Markavius Lewis. Here's the deal with Markavius Lewis, man. Depth player, uh, long arms. He's not getting to the quarterback. He's not going to do that. But what he does do well is he, he anchors the line and he's a very great run stopper. 
that's the type of person we need in situations where, you know what I mean, first and 10, you know teams are going to run, you you know, situationally you put him in and to anchor that line. But don't look for a lot of pass rushing coming from my man Marquavis Lewis. Uh, he's more of a depth player and uh, and against in goal line situations and in run stop situations. Uh, will he make this squad? We don't know. We're going to find out. My man, Eddie Yarbrough. Eddie Yarbrough was a name that came out uh, in the offseason a uh, little bit and um, and and surged in the, in the middle of the year. I think he did really, really well. Uh, we heard his name often. He was pressuring. He was getting out there. He was actually, he made himself available to be on this squad. He pushed himself to get a little more time. Pressure on the quarterback, hands up in the quarterback's face, batted balls down. Like he, he did what he needed to do to get on the field and showcase his abilities. He's got all the potential. I mean, this year, he had three stuffed runs. Uh, he was making a lot of moves. So uh, I see Yarbrough making a name for himself and making this roster, but we don't know. Y'all need to let me know who you guys like, how you guys feel about my assessment on these guys, and how we go forward with this D-line. I've got the verdict coming up. Who is part of the problem? Who is part of the process? We're about to find out. Let go. Kyle Williams is in the last year of his deal. He just completed his last year of his deal. He is now set to either retire or come back. We have every decision to make. So this is our opportunity to structure a deal for Kyle to come back because I'd love him to come back because you just can't replace a guy like that. It's just too tough to do. But if he's got the heart, he's got the ability to come back, bring him back, and let's make things happen. Give him a modest deal, a nice deal, a respectable deal for a guy like him and have him come back. Jerry Hughes. Here's the deal with Jerry Hughes, man. Jerry Hughes needs to come back. There's no question about it. He's our guy. He needs to come back. There's no question. He's the pass rusher that we need him to be back from the 2013-2014 season. We need that Jerry Hughes back. Contractually, though, he's got a base of $6.3 million coming to him. He's got another bonus of a $1 million. A cap hit of $10.3 million. The dead cap is five point eight. million. So what does this all mean to you? If by chance we were to cut jerry hughes and say you know what we're done with your antics and we're out of here see you later we save 4.6 million i'm not about that business that's not good business to me so look for jerry hughes to come back and really bounce back this year because if he doesn't my goodness we're gonna be in trouble cap cappy you know what based on what we did last year i'm gonna group this all up cap cappy problem he's part of the problem i think we can upgrade i honestly do the line the line needs to be upgraded we need a pass rush we need everything we can we just didn't get enough so cap cappy problem ryan davis i think he's part of the process i think we retain ryan davis uh only because of his pass rush ability because that's something we lacked and i think that's what we need coming this year cedric thornton process i like cedric thornton i think he came on really strong and i think he he's he's enough to have a rotational dt come in and out of the game uh situationally so thornton process adolphus washington process there's no question about it we brought you in the third round we know your potential bust your ass and let's get some sacks you at least need to give me five to six sacks this year at least marcavis lewis problem i just think we can get better at the depth uh, pass rush is what we need. Run blocking, run defense is what you provide. But we can get that of all the other guys. There we have it. There's the D-line room. Y'all let me know if I was wrong. Am I off on this? Or do you guys feel uh, exactly how I feel about who should be brought in and who should be left off and sent packing somewhere else? If you guys like what you see, hit the like button, subscribe. So keep showing support. Keep showing love. It's your boy Rico. And I'm gone. Oh, uh -huh.